Hey there, friends. I stumbled upon this profound, stoic quote that really hit home. It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste much of it. It got me thinking about how we spend our days and what we can do to make the most of them. So I've been diving into Stoic philosophy lately, and let me tell you, it's been quite a journey. I wanted to share this transformative experience with you because, well, we all want to make positive changes in our lives, right? A while back, life threw some challenges my way, and I found myself in need of something more, something to guide me toward a better mindset. That's when Stoic philosophy entered the scene. It became a beacon of wisdom, showing me a path to positive change. Let's dive into the habits that turned things around for me in just one month. Stick around. You might find some gems that resonate with you, too. Let's delve into habit one, mindfulness and perception. When it comes to Stoic philosophy, the first game changer for me was embracing the idea of mindfulness and understanding what's within my control. It's like this. Imagine you're steering a boat through the currents of life. You can't control the wind or the waves, but you can control how you navigate. That's the heart of Stoicism, focusing on what you can actually do something about. In my own journey, applying this Stoic concept has been a bit like putting on a new pair of glasses. Suddenly I started seeing things differently. Instead of getting bogged down by things beyond my control, I began to channel my energy into the aspects of life where I could make a real difference. It's like a weight off your shoulders, you know. Now, let's talk mindfulness. It's not about sitting cross-legged for hours, though if that's your thing, more power to you. For me, it's about being present in the moment. When I'm having a cup of coffee or taking a walk, I focus on the taste, the aroma, the feeling of the ground beneath my feet. It might sound simple, but it's surprisingly powerful. There was this one morning rushing to work, usual chaos, and then I stopped. I took a deep breath, noticed the sunlight streaming through the trees, and suddenly the crazy commute became a bit more bearable. Practicing mindfulness has been like having a secret weapon against stress and anxiety. Now, let's talk about changing perception. It's like tweaking the lens through which you see the world. Before, a rainy day might have brought a gloomy mood, but with this stoic habit, I've learned to see the beauty in the rain, the way it nourishes the earth and brings life to everything around. Changing perception isn't about pretending everything is perfect. It's about finding the silver lining, the lesson, the positive angle in any situation. It's a shift from dwelling on what's wrong to appreciating what's right. And trust me, this shift does wonders for your peace of mind. Imagine this. Instead of stressing about a project deadline, you start seeing it as an opportunity to showcase your skills. It's not just about positive thinking. It's about seeing the full picture, the bigger picture, and realizing that sometimes what we perceive as obstacles are actually stepping stones to growth. This first stoic habit isn't about controlling the world around you. It's about mastering your reactions to it. By focusing on what you can control, practicing mindfulness, and changing your perception, you pave the way to a more peaceful and fulfilling life. Habit 2. Practicing Gratitude Let's dive into another game. Changing Stoic Habit Practicing Gratitude It's not just a trendy phrase. It's a powerful tool that Stoics have been wielding for centuries to find joy in the present moment. Imagine this. Instead of always looking ahead or dwelling on what you lack, practicing gratitude is about acknowledging and appreciating what you have right here, right now. It's like having a mental photo album where you flip through the snapshots of your life and say, Hey, I'm grateful for this. For me, this habit was a bit of an eye-opener. Instead of fixating on what was missing, I started recognizing the little things that made life special. It could be a simple cup of tea in the morning or a chat with a friend. It's like putting on gratitude glasses that make the world a bit brighter. Let me share a personal story. One day, after a particularly challenging week, I decided to jot down three things I was grateful for. At first it felt forced, 
like a homework assignment, but as I got into the rhythm, I realized how many blessings I had overlooked. It wasn't just the big wins, it was the small victories, the everyday moments that brought warmth to my heart. Now let's talk impact. Practicing gratitude isn't just a feel. Good exercise. It has real, tangible effects on your mindset. It's like a shift from a scarcity mentality to an abundance mindset. Instead of focusing on what's lacking, you start appreciating the richness of your life. There's this magic that happens when you consistently acknowledge the good stuff. Stress seems to lessen and joy becomes more accessible. It's like reprogramming your brain to notice the positive, and over time, it becomes a habit, a habit that can genuinely transform your outlook on life. I remember a time when a work project didn't go as planned. Instead of dwelling on the setbacks, I paused and thought about what did go well. It wasn't about denying the challenges, but acknowledging the victories, no matter how small. And you know what? It made bouncing back much smoother. Practicing gratitude is about shifting your focus from what's missing to what's present. It's about creating a mental space for appreciation, even in the midst of life's chaos. Habit 3. Acceptance of the Unchangeable Let's talk about another stoic habit that's been a game. Changer for me. Acceptance of the Unchangeable. It's this profound idea of understanding what's in our control and what isn't. Picture it like this. Life is a bit like a roller coaster, and we can't control the twists and turns, but we can control how we react to them. The Stoics were big on this concept of distinguishing between what we can change and what we can't. It's like drawing a line in the sand saying, OK, I can't control the traffic, but I can control how I react to being stuck in it. It sounds simple, but trust me, it's a mental shift that can make a world of difference. In my own life, there were moments when I faced situations I couldn't change. A sudden change at work. A relationship that didn't go as planned. Instead of banging my head against the wall, I started asking myself, is this within my control? If the answer was no, I took a deep breath and focused on what I could control. My attitude, my response, acceptance of the unchangeable is like a superpower for your peace of mind. I remember this one instance when a flight got delayed and instead of getting frustrated, I accepted it. I accepted it as something beyond my control. I used that time to catch up on reading and had a surprisingly relaxed airport experience. Now, let's talk about how this habit fosters resilience and emotional stability. When you accept that some things are beyond your control, it's like building a shield against unnecessary stress. It's not about being passive. It's about being strategic with your energy. By not wasting it on things you can't change, you have more in reserve for the things you can't. Think of it as navigating through a storm. The stoic approach isn't about stopping the rain. It's about learning to dance in it. The acceptance of the unchangeable fosters a resilience that helps you bounce back from setbacks. It's not about being unaffected by challenges but about facing them with a steady heart. Emotional stability becomes a natural byproduct. Instead of riding the emotional roller coaster of every twist and turn, you become the calm in the storm. It's like having a solid anchor amidst the chaos. Acceptance becomes a tool for maintaining your emotional equilibrium. And trust me, that's a game changer. This stoic habit is about recognizing the limits of your control finding peace in acceptance and using that peace in acceptance and using that peace to build resilience and emotional stability. Let's explore habit four, daily reflection and journaling. Now, you might be thinking, journaling. Isn't that just for creative types? Well, bear with me because in the world of stoicism, it's a powerful tool for self discovery and growth. So, why is self-reflection so crucial in Stoicism? It's like having a compass for your soul. Stoics believe that taking a moment each day to reflect on your thoughts, actions, and reactions helps you understand yourself better. It's not about dwelling on the past. It's about learning from it and becoming more self-aware. 
In my own journey, starting a journaling routine was like opening a dialogue with myself. I take a few minutes each evening to jot down the highs and lows of the day, the things I was grateful for, and the challenges I faced. Over time, this routine became a mirror, reflecting back not just my actions, but the why behind them. Let me share a bit about my journaling routine. It's not an elaborate affair, just a few minutes at the end of the day. I start by noting three things I'm grateful for. It could be a friendly chat, a sunny day, or just a good cup of coffee. Then, I reflect on a challenging moment, asking myself how I handled it and what I could learn. The impact on self-awareness has been remarkable. It's like shining a light on the patterns of behavior and thought that I might have missed in the hustle of daily life. I began to see the areas where I could grow, where I could be more mindful, and where I could be more mindful, and where I could align my actions with my values. Now, for those thinking about incorporating journaling into your routine, here are a few tips. First, keep it simple. It's not about writing a novel. It's about capturing the essence of your day. Second, be consistent. Make it a habit like brushing your teeth. And third, be honest with yourself. Journaling is your personal space. There's no judgment. Start by jotting down a couple of things you're grateful for each day. It could be as simple as the taste of your morning tea or the kindness of a co-worker. Then, reflect on a challenge you faced and how you handled it. The goal is not perfection, but progress. Remember, your journal is your ally in this journey of self-discovery. It's a tool to navigate the seas of your thoughts and emotions. So give it a shot, and who knows? You might uncover aspects of yourself you never knew existed. Let's explore Habit 5, Pursuit of Virtue. Virtue here isn't about being a goodie, two-shoes. It's about aligning your actions with what the Stoics called the highest good. It's like having a compass that guides you toward living a life of integrity and kindness. Stoics were big on this idea that true happiness comes from living a virtuous life. It's not about chasing external rewards or fleeting pleasures. It's about cultivating qualities like wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. Picture it as building a foundation for a house. Virtues are the sturdy bricks that make your life solid and meaningful. In my own journey, Aligning my actions with virtues has been a bit like finding my moral north. For example, let's talk about courage. There were times when fear held me back, whether it was speaking up at work or tackling a personal challenge. But embracing the virtue of courage encouraged me to face those fears head on. It's not about being fearless. It's about acting despite the fear. Now, the pursuit of virtue isn't about perfection. It's a journey, not a destination. There are days when patience feels elusive or when I falter in fairness. And that's okay. The Stoics were realistic. They knew we're all a work in progress. The key is the pursuit, the conscious effort to be a little better each day. I encourage you, dear viewers, to think about the virtues that resonate with you. Maybe it's kindness. Maybe it's resilience. Virtues that reflect the best version of yourself. It's not a one size. Fits all. It's about finding your unique blend of virtues that align with your values. Take a moment to reflect on situations where you felt truly proud of your actions. What virtues were at play? Maybe you stood up for someone, displaying courage and justice. Or perhaps you showed kindness in a difficult situation. Identifying these moments helps you understand your core virtues. Now don't get overwhelmed. Start small. Pick one virtue that you want to focus on. Maybe it's patience. In moments of frustration, consciously choose patience. It's these small, intentional actions that pave the way for a virtuous life. Remember, the pursuit of virtue isn't a strict set of rules. It's a guiding philosophy. It's about infusing your life with meaning and purpose. So let's embark on this journey together. Identify your virtues. Align your actions with them and watch how it positively impacts your life. Let's explore Habit 6, Embracing Change. 
stoic habit that's like a life jacket in the sea of uncertainty, embracing change. The Stoics had this profound understanding that change is not just a part of life. It's life's only constant. It's like the seasons changing, inevitable and ever-present. So let's talk about the Stoic perspective on change. They viewed it not as a threat, but as a natural rhythm of existence. It's acknowledging that, just like the river, life flows. And we're all on this journey together. It's a mindset that softens the blows of unexpected twists and turns and helps us navigate the river with grace. In my own life, adapting to change with a stoic mindset has been a bit like learning to dance with the music, even when the tune unexpectedly shifts. There was a time when a job I loved came to an end. Initially, it felt like the ground beneath me was shaking, but then I remembered the stoic wisdom. Change is the only constant. Instead of resisting, I embraced the change. It became an opportunity for growth and exploration. I adopted this mindset of, okay, what can I learn from this? How can I adapt? It's not about denying the discomfort. It's about facing it with resilience and an openness to what the future holds. Now let's talk about how embracing change leads to personal growth. The Stoics believed that every change, whether seemingly good or bad, is an opportunity for growth. It's like a tree adapting to the changing seasons. It may lose some leaves, but it also gains new ones. In my journey, embracing change has led to unexpected adventures and personal development. It's like taking a leap into the unknown, not knowing where you'll land, but trusting that you'll learn to fly on the way down. Change nudges us out of our comfort zones, and that discomfort is where growth happens. Think about a time when a routine got disrupted, and initially it felt uncomfortable. But as you adapted, you probably discovered new strengths, new perspectives. Embracing change is not about clinging to the familiar, it's about opening yourself up to new possibilities. The stoic habit of embracing change is a reminder that life is a river of constant movement. It's not about controlling the currents. It's about learning to navigate them. By embracing change with an open heart and mind, you not only weather the storms, but also find new shores of personal growth. Habit 7. Moderation and Temperance a stoic habit that's all about finding the sweet spot in life, moderation and temperance. The stoics were big on this idea of avoiding excess and practicing self-control. It's like maintaining a balance in the various aspects of our lives, ensuring we don't go overboard. So, let's delve into the stoic perspective on moderation. They believe that excess, whether in pleasures or hardships, can lead to imbalance and disrupt the tranquility of the soul. It's about steering clear of extremes and finding that middle ground where we can flourish. In my own life, practicing moderation has been like tuning an instrument. There were times when I'd plunge into work thinking more hours meant more success. But the stoic idea of moderation urged me to reassess. It's not about overworking. It's about working effectively. It's not about avoiding pleasure. It's about savoring it without letting it control us. Now, let me share a personal anecdote. There was a phase where I'd often succumb to the allure of social media. Endless scrolling, mindlessly consuming content. It felt like a never-ending loop, but embracing moderation changed the game. I set specific times for social media, and suddenly I had more time for meaningful activities, leading to a more balanced life. So how can you implement moderation in your life? Here are a few practical tips. First, be mindful of your habits. Notice when you might be veering towards excess, whether it's in work, leisure, or even food. Awareness is the first step. Second, set boundaries. Define limits for activities that tend to take up too much of your time or energy. It's not about restriction. It's about creating a healthy framework. Another tip is to prioritize. Identify what truly matters to you 
and focus your energy there. It's like decluttering your life, making space for the things that bring genuine joy and fulfillment. Lastly, practice saying no. It's a powerful tool for moderation. Saying no doesn't mean missing out. It means prioritizing what aligns with your values. Moderation isn't about living a dull, monotonous life. It's about living a life that's in harmony with your values and well-being. It's about enjoying the pleasures of life without letting them become vices. It's about working hard, but also knowing when to rest. In this journey of embracing stoic habits over the past month, the changes have been remarkable. It's not just about ticking off a daily to-do list. It's about witnessing a positive transformation unfold in the fabric of daily life. In a nutshell, the impact has been substantial. Focusing on what's within our control has unleashed a newfound sense of empowerment. The simple act of acknowledging and appreciating the present through gratitude has added layers of joy to the ordinary. Accepting the unchangeable has become a source of peace in navigating life's unpredictable terrain. Engaging in daily reflection and journaling has deepened self-awareness, revealing patterns and prompting personal growth. Pursuing virtue as a guiding principle has not only aligned actions with values, but has also brought a sense of purpose to daily endeavors. Embracing change has shifted the perspective from seeing it as a threat to viewing it as an opportunity for growth. Moderation and temperance have fostered a balanced lifestyle, steering clear of extremes and promoting a harmonious existence. Now, let's talk about the personal growth witnessed. It's not just about accomplishing tasks or meeting goals. It's about an internal shift. There's a resilience that wasn't there before, an ability to weather storms with a steady heart. The emotional roller coaster has turned into a more stable ride, and the outlook on life has taken on a more positive hue. To you, dear viewers, I want to acknowledge that the journey of change is not without its challenges. Life can be a complex web of responsibilities, emotions, and unforeseen circumstances. It's okay to feel the weight of it all. In fact, it's entirely normal. Change is a process, and I understand the potential struggles you might be facing. As you consider incorporating these habits into your life, I encourage you to take it one step at a time. Start with a habit that resonates with you, something that feels manageable within your current routine. This isn't about perfection. It's about progress. Experiment, observe, and adjust as needed. Rome wasn't built in a day, and positive habits are no different. The cumulative impact of these small changes is what truly matters. Picture it like a savings account for your well-being. Each small deposit, each habit cultivated, contributes to the overall balance. It's not just about the immediate benefits, but the long-term dividends in personal well-being and satisfaction. So, as you embark on this journey of positive change, remember that it's okay to take it slow. Trust the process, be kind to yourself, and know that the impact of these habits extends far beyond the surface. Stay committed and over time, you'll witness the transformative power of these stoic habits in your own life. You've got this. As we conclude our journey, let's circle back to the wisdom of our initial quote. It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste much of it. These words encapsulate the core of our exploration into stoic habits, urging us to reconsider how we utilize the precious moments of our lives. The habits we've delved into were not merely tasks to fill time. They were gateways to mindful living, prompting us to make the most of every fleeting moment. To you, our valued viewers, I extend heartfelt gratitude for embarking on this journey with us. Your time and engagement have added depth and purpose to our exploration of Stoic philosophy. Whether you've been quietly pondering the concepts or actively incorporating these habits into your life, your presence has made this journey all the more meaningful. As we part ways, I invite you to share your experiences and reflections. 
How have these stoic habits resonated with you? Have you found aspects that align with your own life and aspiration? Your insights are not only valuable to your own growth, but may also inspire and guide others on their journeys. Thank you once again for being a part of this exploration. May the seeds of stoic wisdom planted in these moments continue to blossom in the gardens of your daily life. Until we meet again, stay inspired and may your days be filled with purpose and meaning.